Today I want to share with you how to make a natural acne treatment. This can also be used as a pimple treatment for the occasional blemish. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, consider subscribing to my channel and don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. Some of us are plagued with acne while others of us continue to get blemishes even as we get older. But this natural treatment can help reduce acne and blemishes and it can speed healing and it can help reduce scarring. Now the first thing I want to say is that underneath this video in the description as well as in the pinned comment I will have detailed timestamps so it'll be easy for you to jump around to any particular part of this video that you want to watch. Also in the description and in the pinned comment underneath this video I will have a link to the blog post that corresponds to this video. And in that blog post, I will have a lot of detailed information for you all about the herbs that we're going to use today and the various scientific studies that have studied all of the ingredients that we're going to use today and how scientists have found that they are beneficial to the skin. The third thing I want to mention is that whenever you're using any sort of topical ointment or salve, you always first want to do a patch test on your inner wrist and you want to make sure that there isn't any inflammation developing being caused by the salve or the ointment. And I'll have more detail about a patch test in the blog post. And the fourth thing I want to say is this is not to be used on children. And just one more thing, number five, Always remember that whenever you're using some type of natural preparation that contains herbs, you always want to keep in mind that if you're pregnant, if you're nursing, or if you take any kind of medication, either over the counter or prescription, or if you have allergies, you always want to check with your medical practitioner first, whether that's your MD, or your medical doctor who may also be trained in integrative medicine, just like the doctor we have in our town, as well as any other healthcare practitioner that you work with, because you want to make sure that the herbs you're using agree with whatever your particular situation is. Now to make this particular natural acne treatment, we're going to first make an oil infused in herbs, and then we're going to use that oil to make the acne treatment. And the acne treatment is in the form of a salve. Now if you've seen my video where I share with you a master recipe for making herbal infused oils and then using those oils to make a salve, an herbal salve, this process will look familiar to you. And I'll be sure to link to that video in the description and the pinned comment below, along with all of my master herbal recipes, if that's something that you're interested in learning more about. So first, let's go over the ingredients that we're gonna need to make the infused oil. The first ingredient that you're going to need is barberry root, dried barberry root. The second ingredient that you're going to need is dried Oregon grape root. And the third ingredient that you're going to need are some calendula flowers. Now I want to mention that my friend Cian, who has the company, it's a nice family-owned company, a small business called Farmhouse Teas, sells a lot of herbal mixtures for making herbal teas, but she also sells the individual herbs. And she's put together a package of ingredients for you to make the process of making this natural acne treatment easy. And I will be sure to link to the information uh, in the description and the pinned comment underneath this video so that you can uh, not only learn more about the package that she's put together, but also receive the discount code that she's provided for my viewers. And I want to mention that she also has a YouTube channel called Farmhouse Teas where you can learn a lot about herbs. The only other ingredient that you're going to need to make the oil is 
some oil. Now I'm going to use jojoba oil. Can you use other oils that might be easier to find if you don't have jojoba oil? Yes, you can use olive oil. However, my first choice is jojoba oil. Number one, it's very high in vitamin E and vitamin E acts as a preservative so that after you make your oil and you strain out your herbs and then you decant your oil, it has a nice shelf life because of the high vitamin E content in the jojoba oil, which extends the shelf life. Now, olive oil also has vitamin E in it, but the shelf life will be a little longer if you use jojoba oil as opposed to using olive oil. The other reason why I like to use jojoba oil is because it has been extensively studied by scientists, and I'll have more information about that on the blog post, but it's been extensively studied by scientists that have found the various properties that it contains that are very beneficial to the skin. And one of those properties is that jojoba oil is non-cotomogenic. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. You know, I'm the queen of mispronunciation. But what that means is that this oil will not clog your pores. So you don't have to worry that you're putting something on your face that may actually clog your pores and then create more acne or more blemishes. Jojoba oil is non cotomogenic It's not going to clog your pores. Now, technically, olive oil is also non cotomogenic but in the various studies that have been done studying both jojoba oil and olive oil, is that some studies have found that olive oil sometimes can cause some mild skin irritation as opposed to jojoba oil that seems to be extremely well tolerated. So that's all you need to make the oil. And there are three ways you can make the oil. There's the old fashioned steeping method, but don't worry if you're in a rush for this because I'm going to show you that there are other ways you can make this oil a lot quicker. And if you've seen my master recipe, you already know those ways. Then when we go to make the salve, the actual acne or pimple treatment, all you're going to need is some beeswax and you only need about an eighth of a cup. Don't worry, it's not 100% exact science, but you just need to measure out about an eighth of a cup. I've got the pellets. If you have the solid piece of beeswax, you can grate it and that will work fine as well. Now, I do want to mention one optional ingredient. And if you made the healing ointment with me uh, that we made a few weeks back for when you get a bug bite or a scrape or a cut, whatever the case may be, you have already heard about my discussion regarding helichrysum essential oil. Now, this particular brand is by Plant Therapy. I have no connection to that company. Uh, all, uh, it's just something that I saw and was able to purchase. And so whatever helichrysum essential oil that you like or that you can find will work in this recipe. Now, the only reason I make this optional, and you can see I have a very small jar here, a very small bottle here, is helichrysum essential oil can be a little expensive. And I find it very, very excellent when used in a healing ointment. And I feel healing ointments are so important. Uh, so I'm willing to splurge a little to have a little bit of essential oil and you don't need much. Uh, however, the reason that I make this optional in this particular acne treatment is that helichrysum is one of those essential oils that has so many beneficial properties. It speeds healing. It helps with skin regeneration. And these types of things help further reduce scarring. Now, the jojoba oil is wonderful for that, but if you want a little extra boost, then your helichrysum oil is worth adding to this. Uh, but don't don't worry if you don't have it or you don't want to buy it. This is going to work very well, just as it is with the ingredients that I've gone over with you. It's just that that will just add a little something extra. And speaking of adding something extra, 
I do want to take a minute to talk about golden seal. We're going to use the Oregon grapefruit and the barberry root. We're also using the calendula flowers, but they kind of take a little bit of a backseat to these first two. It's these first two that have been also studied extensively by scientists and have been found to help considerably uh, when it comes to healing and preventing acne. However, the jewel in the crown, so to speak, is golden seal. But golden seal is very expensive. So I recommend starting with these two first. And if you don't uh, find that you're getting the results you want, then the next thing I recommend is to make a new batch. You can even warm this uh, and, and warm it, you know, reliquify it, so to speak, and go ahead and add in uh, a few drops of the helichrysum essential oil. If you find that after doing that, you're still not getting the results you want, then you may want to consider purchasing uh, the dried golden seal and making your natural treatment with that. But I highly recommend starting out with these first because they are excellent and the helichrysum essential oil is also excellent. So I think this is gonna work very well for you unless maybe you're an extreme case and then you may wanna take the plunge, so to speak, or <laughs> and spend the extra money to buy the golden seal. Now, Barberry Root and Oregon Grape Root have been studied extensively to be very beneficial to the skin because they're high in antibacterial properties that can penetrate the skin when made into an oil or a salve. And by penetrating the skin, they can kill the bad bacteria that's often linked to causing acne or other types of blemishes. Now, of course, like everything, this is just topical. So much of what we eat plays a large role in what shows up on our face. So learning about traditional foods and eating a traditional foods diet will further help uh, any skin conditions that you may be plagued with. Now, in addition to the barberry root and the Oregon grape root, I like to add in some calendula flowers. And the reason is calendula is a very soothing ingredient. It just soothes the skin. And often when you have acne or you have blemishes, they can be somewhat uncomfortable. And the calendula will help soothe that and hopefully diminish a little bit of your discomfort. Now we're gonna do this the old fashioned way. We're not going to weigh anything. We're simply just going to eyeball it, so to speak, so that we have the jar filled with about a third of each of these. And I recently learned from my friend Michelle, who I think many of you know over at Chocolate Box Cottage, that the way that I tend to do things is referred to as the folk medicine method. And I thought that was very cute because as so many of you know, I love doing things the way our ancestors did. I don't like to have to weigh and measure everything. Instead, I kind of like to just use measuring cups, weigh and measure in the sense of using a scale. If I have to measure something, I like to just use measuring cups or measuring spoons or just sometimes eyeball things. So we're doing this the old fashioned way, the traditional way, not unlike what our ancestors would have done. Now, I'm sure you're wondering, since these have different textures, do we need to be concerned about making sure that we get exactly equal amounts? And the answer is no. We literally are just going to eyeball it a third and a third, and a third. <laughs> and the reason is, it's okay that these are more uh, chopped up, in essence, than the flowers, the calendula flowers. And that's what we want because we want, in terms of density, to have more of the barberry and more of the Oregon grape root because these are what are most helpful to helping with acne or with blemishes. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is, since this is the most chopped up, I'm going to take the Oregon grape root and put this down into my jar. And what I'm using here is a pint size jar. This is just a canning jar, but any jar you have that's approximately a pint size will be perfect. 
Next, I'm going to take our barberry root and go ahead and get this into the jar. Alrighty, that looks close enough. <laughs> and now I'm going to go ahead and put in these calendula flowers. And you don't want to press them down because you do want to give the oil some room to get in there and really start extracting all the wonderful properties that these dried herbs have. And what I like to do is to fill this just to about uh, the first notch on the jar, where if you were putting on a lid, this is sort of the first notch. So a third, a third, a third, right up to this first ring, so to speak, on your jar, on your pint-sized jar. Now, how long do you need to let this steep once we put the oil in, and where do you need to let this steep? The general rule is that you want to let this steep, these particular herbs, you want to let them steep in the oil for anywhere from four to six weeks. Generally, if you're just doing flowers and leaves, four weeks is sufficient. If you're using roots and stems, six weeks works better. Even though we do have flowers in here, we primarily have roots. So we're going to let this steep for six weeks. Now, where is it best to allow this to steep? Should you put it in a sunny windowsill or should it be in a dark pantry? There are different schools of thought on this from various herbalists. However, Rosemary Gladstar, who I really enjoy following via her books, recommends that you can do either. And it's fine to put this in a sunny windowsill and allow, allow it to steep in that fashion. Now you might be saying, but Mary, it has oil in it and you're gonna put it in a sunny windowsill? Isn't that going to speed up the rancidity of the oil? And that's a great question and one that Rosemary Gladstar has addressed. Because in this case, jojoba oil is very rich in vitamin E and an antioxidant. However, just as a general rule, whenever you're steeping herbs in any oil for that matter, is that herbs like this are also very high in antioxidants. And so they protect the oil from going rancid. And speaking of Rosemary Gladstar, if you're new to herbs and you want to learn a little bit more about them, as in how to know them, how to grow them, and how to use them, I highly recommend this book that she has for beginners. Even as someone who's been working with herbs for many years, I still refer to this very frequently, and I think that you will really enjoy it. She has a number of books, and she has been working with herbs, I think, since the 1970s. So when you want to learn about herbs in book form, you can't go wrong with Rosemary Gladstar. And if you'll indulge me, I have a little bit of a shameless plug for my own book, The Modern Pioneer Cookbook, where in it I have a recipe that I share with you for how to use herbs to make digestive bitters. And those are wonderful if you have any trouble digesting your food and you tend to get uh, indigestion and whatnot. And I think you'll like that recipe very much. Now, if you enjoy taking a course in learning about herbs and how to use them to make natural treatments, then you definitely want to consider my friend Heidi's classes, which she offers through the School of Botanical Arts and Sciences. And Heidi has been so kind to offer a discount to my viewers. And I'll be sure to put all the information in, in the uh, description and in the pinned comment below. And Heidi was trained by Rosemary Gladstar, so you can't get a better teacher than her. Now I want to mention, we're using dried flowers and dried roots in this particular recipe. And that is what I recommend when making this acne or pimple treatment. This is best made with dry herbs as opposed to fresh herbs. Can you make various herbal oils with fresh herbs? Yes but a lot will depend on what you're eventually going to use that oil for. And that's why I highly recommend having some good herb books or taking a good herbal course, because you will learn all these various different uh, 
methods and different ways of making different herbal treatments and what needs what and how much this takes and so on and so forth. But what we're gonna do is I have, this is a 16 ounce bottle of jojoba oil. And as I said, how much, how dry they are, uh, the different particular roots versus the flowers, how much oil is going to be absorbed, it really varies. But all you're going to want to do is just make sure that you put enough oil in your jar so that it does come up to the point where all of the herbs are submerged. Now it feels like I used about half of this bottle, so it probably took about eight ounces of the jojoba oil. So all you do now is take your lid, put that on, tighten it, and then go ahead and put this wherever you want, either in your pantry or in a sunny windowsill or just on your kitchen counter. Periodically, you can check on it and maybe stir it a little, or if you just feel like shaking it a little, you can do that as the, it's going to become a little thicker as the herbs and the, as the flowers in this case and the roots start to absorb the oil. And you just want to make sure that you kind of tamp everything down and keep everything under the oil as much as possible. Now, since we do have the roots in here, I'm going to let this steep for six weeks. But now what if you want to speed up the process? You can certainly do that and you can make this in one day. In my master recipe for making herbal oils, I show you how to use a double boiler to warm your oil with your herbs in it and warm them for an hour or two. But it's very important that you do this in a double boiler. And in that video, that master recipe video, I use just a makeshift double boiler. I have a little soup pot and I put a little stainless steel uh, bowl on top with a little bit of water in the soup pot. I have it on very, very low heat. And then I just, and I make sure that the stainless steel pot is not touching the water that's sitting on top of the soup pot. And you just let it simmer for about an hour or two. And you wanna do this very, very gently. How do you know when it's ready? You're going to start to smell an aroma as the herbs start to release all of their various essential oils into the oil, the carrier oil that you're using, that you're warming them in. As the aroma increases, it will reach a point where you notice that it's not increasing anymore. And that will be within that two hour frame, time frame. And so then you can strain out the herbs, strain out the solids, and now you have your oil. And then you can proceed with the rest of the steps that we're going to do uh, in terms of making the salve, the acne treatment or the pimple treatment. Now there is a third way you can do this. However, herbalists have mixed emotions, so to speak, on whether they like the idea of the third method or not. But I do want to share it with you so that you are informed about it. So you know about the steeping method, you know about the stovetop method. The third method is the oven method. But the problem with the oven method is that if you mix your carrier oil and your herbs into you know, a glass container, whatever you have that's oven safe, that's oven proof, you need to have an oven in which you can set the temperature relatively low. And today, a lot of ovens don't allow you to do that. If you could set your oven to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, that would probably be the best option. I know that many ovens today only go as low as 170 degrees Fahrenheit, and some only go as low as 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's definitely an option for you to try, but again, I highly recommend that you research this and you read about it because herbalists do have different opinions on whether the 170 or the 200 might be too warm. And we don't want to do anything to damage the essential oils and, and damage the carrier oil as well. And then something that you want to think about is if you have an oven that maybe has like a bread proofing option, or maybe you have a pilot light or an electric light, but the oven is turned off, 
something that would allow your oven to maintain a temperature around 110 degrees Fahrenheit would be outstanding. And if you did that, then you could probably consider with confidence that you were creating an oil that uh, was truly beneficial and that you hadn't damaged any of the essential oils coming from the herbs or any of the oil that you were using as your carrier oil. So think about that and think about your oven and definitely do some research as to what are considered appropriate temperatures when making herbal oil infusions. And if you decide that you want to do an uh, herbal oil infusion in the oven, again, do some research about this to find out what would be the appropriate times that you would want to leave your oil with the herbs in your oven, whether you have the bread proofing option, maybe at 110, or the various lights, whether it's the pilot light or the electric light, keep your oven at about 110, or what you would need to do if your oven can only go as low as 150, 170, or 200 Fahrenheit. I don't use the oven method, but I just wanted to share that with you in case that was something you wanted to consider. Now I have detailed instructions in that master recipe that I had shared with you earlier about how to make an herbal infused oil. Uh, so what I'll do is just quickly, what, you can watch that video, but what I'll do is just quickly walk through what would be involved once your oil was ready. So say for example, and this would apply whether you use the stovetop method or the oven method, but we'll pretend that this is steeped for six weeks. You're just going to unscrew it. You're going to want to get a fine mesh strainer, put it over some sort of vessel to catch the oil, and then you're simply going to pour your oil with the herbs in it into your mesh strainer and let the oil drain down into the vessel you're using to catch it. You do not want to compress the herbs in the mesh strainer because you don't want any little bits to go down into your oil in, into the vessel in which you're catching it. Now, can you use a coffee filter or some flour sack towels or whatever the case may be to strain your oil? You could, but I generally don't do that because those would also be absorbing some of the oil. And I really wanna get as much oil as I can uh, out of this process. So what works best is just gently drop those herbs with the oil down into your mesh strainer let the oil drain, and then you're going to go ahead and decant that oil. Now, what to do with the leftover herbs that may still have some oil in them? Once you've captured, so to speak, your first pressing, so to speak, and decanted that oil, you can now go ahead and press down on those herbs to get as much oil out of them as possible. Now, that second pressing may have little bits in it. However, if you want to use that oil, say to make a second batch of the acne salve, you can certainly do that. It's just not going to be as pure, so to speak, as the first pressing. And so if you uh, tend to have acne on your back or blemishes on your back, where you're not so concerned about uh, the cream, in essence, the acne treatment, the herbal cream being perfectly pristine, uh, you can make your second batch with that second pressing and use it in an area where you're not worried about it looking so perfect. Then once you've done that second pressing in your mesh strainer and gotten out as much oil as, that you, as you think from those herbs, you can do different things with the herbs at this point. Uh, herbalist will sometimes recommend that you can put these in a compost pile, but you just want to make sure that whatever oil that you're using is acceptable to be used in a compost. So there's a little research involved uh, on your part when you're making these various type of preparations and you're using herbs and oils, uh, whatever the case may be. 
uh, but any good herbal book uh, is going to have a lot of information about this so that you're not necessarily just wasting things and just throwing them into your garbage. Now once you've strained your oil and you're ready to decant it, it's great if you can decant it into a dark colored bottle. Uh, you're going to put it preferably into a cool dark pantry as opposed to the bathroom which we'll explain in a minute. Uh, but if you've got a dark bottle like this, that helps to also extend its shelf life. If not, and all you have is a clear bottle, putting it sometimes in a paper bag can help. If you're opening that pantry door a lot, uh, I tend to keep these in my working pantry. And so if I do have amber bottles or dark, this is I think kind of a greenish color bottle, I like to use these darker bottles to help preserve uh, my herbal oil as much as possible. And I like to also have a nice tight fitting uh, screw, ca screw cap lid on them. And if you've not seen my video uh, that I think I believe I call it, I'll put a link to it below, I believe I call it Kitchen Treasures from the Garbage. <laughs> and I am a big fan of recycling any type of bottles that may come your way and also alert your neighbors and family or whomever lives around you uh, that if they tend to throw out bottles and jars, can you have them and recycle them? Uh, because they're very helpful whenever you make homemade preparations like this. The next thing I want to mention, and this is exceptionally helpful if you tend to live in a damp climate, uh, maybe like uh, Florida or a humid climate or the Pacific Northwest, that sometimes putting a little piece of paper, this is just a little coffee filter, uh, but putting some type of paper over your jar and then putting your screw cap lid on can be very helpful at preventing and then tighten it nice and tight can be, oh, I didn't do that very well, <laughs> it's kind of crooked. But this can be very helpful at preventing uh, moisture buildup in uh, your jar. Sometimes that can happen in humid climates but I think this one's a little too thick for that. So I'm just gonna do two, two layers here. But this will keep any condensation from forming. It'll just be absorbed by the paper. All right, perfect, there we go. And so keep that in mind. I live in a relatively dry climate. Sometimes I do this uh, depending on the season or d if we're getting a lot of rain. A lot of times we're just in a drought and it's very dry. Uh, but I do feel that this is an important step if you live in a very humid or damp climate. And you will find that this will keep any, this will absorb any condensation or any moisture that may form in your jar if you didn't have that and you just had the screw cap on. And you don't want any liquid or any condensation, any water like that dripping down into your herbal oil because that'll just shorten its shelf life. That'll, it causes uh, contamination when you start to uh, introduce any kind of liquid other than the oil into the oil. Now I'm just gonna make the basic acne treatment recipe. I'm not gonna add in the helichrysum oil, uh, but if this is something that you wanna do, then just check out my blog post over on the website and I'll explain exactly how much you wanna put in and when you wanna put it in. And also in that blog post, I'll have a link to the healing ointment uh, that I had made previously in which I did use the helichrysum oil. Now to make our acne treatment, our acne salve, all we need is a soup pot and then some type of bowl to put on top of it. Now, if you have a regular double boiler, you're all set. But if not, uh, the bowl that you wanna use to put on top of the soup pot uh, should be something that's non-reactive, something that's not going to react with the various herbs that have been steeped in this oil. I'm going to use stainless steel. You can certainly use heat-proof glass as well. Now, all you wanna put in your soup pot is about an inch of water, nothing more than that. Then you're gonna go ahead and put your bowl on top and you wanna make sure that your bowl is shallow enough that it's not touching the water. Then you're gonna turn your stove top on 
And this is my little countertop burner. And so many of you have asked me about this. And this is made by Cuisinart. I'll put a link. I think this is still sold. I've had this for a while. Uh, but I'll, if I can find it, I'll put a link in the description below. Uh, yes, I do like this very much. It does run hot, so you have to be careful. But it comes in very handy uh, during canning season. So uh, that's why I like to have it. And it's got a nice, this is a nice heavy cast iron burner. Alrighty, well this has a minimum setting and that's exactly what I'm going to set it to. And I'm going to let this water warm very gently and then we'll move on to the next steps. Now this water is warming up, so what I'm going to do is take the oil. This is my oil that I've decanted, my oil that was made uh, with the barberry, uh, the Oregon grapefruit, and the calendula flowers. Now, I probably have more oil here than you do because I did my original batch in a quart size jar uh, because I wanted to make more uh, than what I would be able to make in the pint size jar. However, to make this particular acne treatment, what you're going to be able to retrieve from the pint size jar will be more than sufficient. Now I also have this in a glass bottle, a clear glass bottle, so that you would be able to see what the oil looks like. Uh, but as I had said earlier, I recommend that if you can store it in a amber or you know dark bottle or maybe even just pop it in. If you have a clear bottle like this, then pop it into a paper bag. The aroma is quite lovely. Alrighty, now all we need is a half a cup of the oil, of the herbal oil. Now I'm going to go ahead and pour this oil right down into our bowl that's on top of the soup pot. Now I'm going to go ahead and put in an eighth of a cup of my beeswax pellets as this oil is warming gently. Now you want to continue to heat this very slowly. As I said, I have it on minimum and you want to keep a close eye on it because once the beeswax has melted into the oil, then you're done. You're ready to remove it from the heat. And you can help it along a little. You can stir it periodically uh, to help everything become nicely mixed together. But you do want to keep a close eye on this because you never want to overheat it. Now as that's melting, you just want to get your jars ready. Now, if you have something like this, again, kitchen treasure from the garbage, <laughs> if you have an amber or dark colored bottle, uh, this is excellent uh, for storing your acne treatment solve in. Uh, if you have one of these type jars that have the latch, this is great too. It makes a nice tight airtight seal. It's just not amber in color. And then of course, you've seen me use these when I made my healing ointment. Uh, these four ounce jelly jars work wonderful too. And then you can just put the storage lid on it. And again, if you're going to store these, these are best stored in a cool dark pantry. Uh, if the door is opened a lot, you can go ahead. If all you have is the clear glass like this, you can go ahead and tuck those into a brown paper bag, which I actually have to thank you for because you recommended that to me uh, once in the comments when we were talking about putting various herbal remedies in, gla in clear glass jars. Uh, but if you've got the amber jar, all the better. Now, even though this is something we are using on our skin, you do not want to store this in your bathroom. The change in temperatures from the uh, steam and heat, from the shower, from the bathtub, and just the moisture that tends to be in a bathroom can cause these to degrade and not last as long as you might like them to. So best to store all of these as well as your herbal oil and any herbal solves you make in a cool dry place, in a cool dark dry place away from moisture. Now how long these last really varies and herbalists will vary on what they tell you. Uh, but, and again, a lot depends on what type of oil you're using, what type of herbs you're using. And so having some type of reference guide can be incredibly helpful. Some sources will recommend that 
herbal oils and herbal salves may stay at their greatest potency within the first six months. Others will say a year, others 18 months, others two years. So what I recommend is that you use a good resource for yourself that you can refer to and, and where it will show what oils you're using, what herbs you're using, and then what the recommended shelf life is. But generally, my personal opinion is that whenever you're making home remedies of any type, whether uh, topical or ones that you're going to be ingesting, I'm of the school of thought where they're probably at their best efficacy within the first year, but that's just me. Except tinctures when they're made with alcohol, those basically become kind of a forever tincture. Uh, anything preserved in alcohol can last a very, very long time. But things with oils, that's just me. I tend to think a year. And in some cases, maybe they're even best within six months. But definitely refer uh, to some resources uh, such as Rosemary Gladstar's books because they are a, a wonderful reference to have on your kitchen bookshelf uh, when you're making these type of preparations. Now I'm going to use the four ounce jelly jar. I think it'll all fit uh, to decant this treatment, this acne treatment, so that you can see exactly what it looks like and then we will also let it cool so that you can see what the consistency is. Now one thing I want to mention, and you'll see this in my master recipe uh, for making herbal salves, is that what I generally recommend is that when you make these type of things for the first time, once the beeswax is melted and the oil, the oil is warmed nicely and the beeswax is melted, put a tiny little bit on a plate and then pop the plate either in your freezer or your refrigerator, you know, 30 seconds, a minute, something like that. And then once it has cooled, see the, the consistency of the salve. See if you find that it's a nice consistency and that it's spreadable and then you know you've reached the right proportions for creating a salve that's very useful. If you find that it's kind of, even after being chilled, it's a little loose, it's a little oily, you know, more like an oil as opposed to a salve, it's not a big deal. Just add a few more pellets of uh, the beeswax and let them melt and then try it again and you'll see that really just with a few beeswax pellets it'll probably firm up to the consistency you like. If you've chilled it and you see that the consistency is like really really hard like it's really hard to get a little bit out to rub it on your skin then you can just go ahead and add a little bit of your oil a little additional oil a small amount maybe a teaspoon and you'd be amazed at how small amounts can make a significant difference and then do the same thing. Chill it, see what the consistency is, see if you're happy with it. I'm confident that after a few beeswax pellets or maybe another teaspoon of your herbal oil, you're going to reach a nice spreadable consistency. Well, the beeswax pellets are melting nicely. This is very close to almost being done. And I wanna mention that beeswax doesn't, doesn't just help to firm up uh, your oil to make this a nice uh, cream or salve or ointment, whatever you'd like to call it, beeswax also has soothing properties. So you're getting the best of both worlds. You're able to turn this into a salve uh, or cream or ointment, but at the same time, you're using a product, the beeswax, that will soothe your skin not unlike the calendula flowers, the, the essential oils that are extracted from the calendula flowers. Well, this is coming along nicely. We'll get ready to decant it. Well, all the beeswax is melted, so I'm gonna turn off my heat. And this is, this pot, or the, my, my wood makeshift double boiler, it's a little warm, so I'm just gonna use a pot holder to hold this. Then what I'm gonna to try to do is see if I can very carefully 
uh, transfer this into this little jelly jar. Sometimes you can certainly use a funnel or you can get transfer this to a pitcher and then pour it in like that as well. Sometimes the funnel is a little challenging in such a small jar like this, but I think I can get this in and I don't think we'll have any problems. Perfect. Now let's let this cool and I'll show you the consistency and how to use it. Well, this has cooled beautifully and now it has a wonderful consistency that is easy to take some onto your finger and then apply it wherever you need it. Now a little bit of this goes a long way. So you can just spin your finger around on this a couple of, on top of, of the uh, salve a couple of times and some will start to come off onto your finger as I showed you. And then you can just rub this between your hands and then just go and apply this to your face if your entire face is subject to acne or blemishes. And if you just have one blemish or two blemishes, just a few, you can just spin your finger around on the top a little bit and then just dab it on to wherever the affected area needs some help. And I want you to keep in mind, herbal remedies like this, whether they're salves or oils, teas, whatever the case may be, whatever you're making with herbs, that overall, these are gentle remedies and they take time. They may not work as quickly as over-the-counter remedies or remedies you may receive from a dermatologist. These work slowly and gently, but in the long run, they are more natural. So consider giving yourself a little bit of time to see how they work. Give yourself about a few weeks and notice if you, or see if you notice any improvement in your skin. And if not, you can always try upping the ante, so to speak, by adding a little bit of the helichrysum essential oil, or maybe eventually making a salve uh, for an acne treatment using golden seal. But remember, before applying this to your whole face, or even to one or two blemishes, be sure to take a little bit do a patch test first, give it a little time, and if you don't develop any irritation, then you're okay to go ahead and use it on other parts of your body, your face, your back, wherever you're affected with blemishes or acne. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how to make a whole variety of herbal ointments and herbal salves and numerous other herbal remedies, be sure to click on this video over here where I have a whole playlist that covers all of those and more. And I'll see you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.